morning, Connect Church. To start this morning, let's read from Luke 15. Now the tax collectors and sinners were all drawing near to him. And the Pharisees and the scribes grumbled, saying, This man receives sinners, and he eats with them. So he told them this parable. What man of you, having a hundred sheep, if he has lost one of them, does not leave the ninety-nine in the open country and go after the one that is lost until he finds it? And when he has found it, he lays it on his shoulders rejoicing. And when he comes home, he calls together his friends and his neighbors, saying to them, Rejoice with me, for I found my sheep that was lost. Just so I tell you. There will be more joy in heaven over one sinner who repents than over 99 righteous persons who need no repentance. What great news that we have, that God comes after us. He seeks us. He finds us because he loves us so dearly. So let's pray together as we begin worship this morning, as we glorify him. So let's pray. Dear Father in heaven, what joy it is for you to come and find us where we are, Lord. Wherever we we may be, Lord, you are chasing us down, you are seeking us out. Lord, you find us in brokenness, in hurt, in shame and in guilt, Lord. And it's so beautiful to see that you love us anyway. So Lord, I pray today that we experience more of your love, that as we experience more of your love, we can show others your love too, Lord. It's in your name we pray. spoke a word you were singing over me you have been so so kind to me before I took a breath you breathed your life in me been so so kind to me and oh the overwhelming never ending reckless love of God and oh it chases me down fights till I'm found leaves the ninety-nine couldn't turn I don't deserve it Still you give yourself away And know the overwhelming Never-ending Reckless love of God No, the overwhelming. 
chases me down, fights till I'm found, leaves the ninety-nine, and I couldn't earn it, I don't deserve it, still you Shadow, you won't light up. Mountain, you won't climb up. Coming after me. There's no wall you won't kick down. I you won't tear down. Coming after me.
express how much you deserve Though I'm weak and poor All I have is yours Every single breath I'll bring you more than a song For a song in itself is out what you have required You search much deeper within Through the way things appear You're looking into my heart I'm coming back to the heart of worship And it's all about Church. Uh, it's glad, we're glad to have you with us this morning for our services. Uh, before we get into the prayer, I just want to remind each of us uh, as being part of the family of Connect Church that uh, during the coming week, we would like to have you pray for our shut-ins, uh, for the people who are sick, for people who might be having surgery. Best place to find that would be going to the uh, Connect uh, Church newsletter uh, and see who's there, see who has what, and please begin to pray for them. Um, we are family, and the more prayers we have for our family, uh, the better it is for us. These are unusual times. The pandemic has been here for a, a period of time longer than I even anticipated. And the thing with the pandemic is this, is that it causes us to be in some isolation. Uh, it causes us to be in some loneliness. It causes us to be apart from each other. And, and church service, church worship, is being with each other. So I want to be aware of those facts. Uh, hopefully in the near future, uh, we will be coming together again live in our church. Uh, but until then, make sure that we pray for each other. Even the people that aren't in the newsletter, pray for each other. Pray for people you might know that have a special need. But here's what I want you to know. Okay? King David and all the things that he did in the Bible, taking care of the entire nation, having armies, going to wars and things like that. The very first thing that King David did every morning before he did anything else was he went and lifted up God's name. He had prayer, he had communion with God every morning. First thing, before our coffee, before our newspaper, before our run, whatever it might be that you do first thing in the morning, he always had prayer with God. So I'm encourage each of us to do that, okay? It's something that would become a new habit and have us take time, but I think it's a habit that you will never, ever regret that you have done. So before we go to prayer here, I wanna read Philippians 
4, 6 to 9. And this is going to be what we're going to be praying for today. So here's God's word. Philippians 4, 6 to 9. Do not be anxious about anything, but in everything by prayer and petition with thanksgiving, present your request to God. And the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Finally, brothers, whatever is true, whatever is noble, whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is admirable, if anything is excellent or praiseworthy, think about such things. Whatever you have learned or received or heard from me or seen in me, put it into practice and the God of peace will be with you. Shall we pray? Lord God, as it says in Philippians 4, 6, do not be anxious about anything, but in everything by prayer and petition with thanksgiving, present your request to God. Lord God, we know that the COVID-19 has been just pandemic. It has consumed everyone. It's only consumed our town of Pella. It's consumed our state. It's consumed our nation, Father. But here's what we need to know. You have given us your Holy Spirit. He is present in us every single day. We can draw on his strength. Okay? His strength is our strength because you have put the Holy Spirit in us, God. So I ask you, Father, don't let us think that we live in isolations or that we're alone at all because we have you with us every single day, Father God. And we thank you so much for that. And as you say in verse 7, and the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Okay? God, your peace is with us. It is upon us. Okay? Give us understanding. Let us understand what's going on, Father. Don't let us worry about it, but give us understanding. Okay? Guard our hearts and our minds in Christ Jesus. God, help us to focus on you so we know where our strength comes from. We know that we won't get lost in all the worry and anxiety about this COVID, but that we belong body and soul and mind to you, Father. And as you said in verse eight, finally, brothers, whatever is true, whatever is noble, whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is admirable, if anything is excellent or praiseworthy, Think about these things, Father. We know that those things are true, God. You are admirable. You are worthy. Your son is worthy. Your word is worthy, God. People that go to our church, Father, are worthy. We need to respect each other. We need to forgive each other, God, because you have done it to us. Okay? The one person who had absolutely no sin and guilt in his entire life went to the cross willingly to forgive us our sins so someday we can come in heaven to live with you. So God, help us to do the same thing with our brothers and our sisters because you require us to do it, Father. So help us to follow that. And finally, Father, you said, whatever you have learned or received or heard from me or seen in me, put it into practice and the God of peace will be with you. Lord God, we look for that peace. We search for that peace. The peace only comes from you. Okay? only comes from you. So let us know that you are with us every step of the way, every step that we take, God. So we ask you for that peace. We thank you, Father, for that peace. We thank you for Connect Church. We thank you for Pastor Brad and Mary for leading us in these hard times. We haven't got a chance together, and we are excited about when we come back together again, Father. So thank you. We honor you. We love you. Amen. Church family and friends, it is so good that you chose to join us here in worship. And that's the language I, I want you to think about is you have chosen to, to worship with us, to come to worship, not just to sit back, um, watch, or be entertained, but you are worshiping. And 
One way we do that is by turning to God's word. So, so I invite you to, to do that with me. Uh, grab your Bibles if you haven't already and go to 2 Timothy 3. And we are going to continue in our sermon series on social distancing discipleship. And Paul's making a transition in this letter with, with content for Timothy in discipling him. And the way that I, I think it's best to think about this is this way. It's something you're very familiar with. Um, you've probably heard this phrase. You've probably seen this phrase. Stay home, save lives. It's the CDC, the, the Center of Disease Control's tagline that they're encouraging people to do. Stay home, save lives. And it really boils down to just one word. Avoid. So they're saying stay home as much as you can. Avoid going out. Or, or, or make sure you're avoiding close contact with people. Avoid that. Socially distance. Avoid touching your face, your eyes, your nose, your mouth, which when you're told that, it's really hard to do. Um, so wash your hands really good, but, but avoid that. And I'm guessing by now you're getting sick of this, but I continue to encourage you to stick with it. It's not that we like this, but we're learning to live with this. This avoid. But the reality is, is it's creating a void. Uh, we're, we're missing things. We're missing community. But, but this is the CDC guideline of how to handle this pandemic caused by COVID-19. And what Paul is doing in 2 Timothy 3 is he's transitioning and he's basically giving a CDC guideline for Timothy concerning a spiritual pandemic caused by sin. Because that's the reality of, of what we're in. We may not always think about it very often or, or we don't want to think about it very often, but it is a reality that we live with. And if you're just like, Brad, that's just kind of church language. I don't believe in that. All you got to do is look at some evidence of, of suffering in this world, death in this world. That is evidence of sin. It's not the way that it should be. And that's what, what sin, the virus, is causing. And that's, that's how I want you to think about sin as we talk about it today. It is a deadly virus, way deadlier than COVID-19. It is a reality just as it is. And it's not just, sin is not just this bad things I do that make God angry. Like, I don't want you to think about it that way. It's a deadly virus. And just like with COVID-19, they're saying people are carriers and they don't even know it. All of us are carriers, whether we know it or not of the virus called sin. And Paul, his next discipleship item he wants to press into Timothy is the CDC warning of a void. Stay home, save lives. So, so let's look at this. Grab your Bibles, starting at verse one of chapter three. But understand this, Paul says, and, and he's really going back to chapter two, verse 26. Okay, let me just read it because it's something we're going to hit today where it reads, they may escape from the snare, the trap of the devil. Okay, we're going we're to talk about that spiritual battle reality. After being captured, that, that word means to lead astray, to lead away. It, it deals with capturing your thoughts, your mind, being captured by him to do his will. And so he states that and he goes on. But understand this, Timothy, that in the last days, there will come times of difficulty. So last days, that's biblical language of the days that are leading up to Jesus' return. You see, this is what we believe. We believe that Jesus came very intentionally to deal with the virus of sin. He didn't come just to deal with the symptoms, right? Experts right now are not just dealing with symptoms, trying to figure out how to stop the dry cough or the fever. They're trying to figure out the roots of what's causing that, which is COVID-19. And so Jesus came to deal with the roots of our symptoms of sin by addressing sin. And so he came as fully God. He was born to become fully man, both fully God, fully man, in order to address the virus. And, and he did that ultimately through his death. You see, sin's ultimate punishment is death. And so Jesus willingly took that on. He took on the human's 
sentence of death. And he could only do that as fully God, and he died in our place. But then he rose victorious from the grave. He rose victorious over death, giving us life. And then he, he ascended into heaven, giving us his Holy Spirit so we could actually have the power to live that life. And one day he's going to come again. And he's going to wipe away all the effects of sin, which is tears and pain and sorrow and suffering. Last days are those days prior to Jesus coming to complete this work of salvation. And, and Paul says, in the last days, you're going to face some difficult times. And the reason why is, is in verse 2. It's not going to be necessarily, even though it's true, necessarily the suffering or, or the death of loved ones or the diseases we battle. He says it's going to be because of people. Difficult times because of difficult people. And what he does in verses 2 through 5 is he goes on and gives 19 different descriptions or symptoms of what you need to look for in these people. And I'm not going to go through them all. That really grinds against me. I, I love to go through each verse. I love to look at each word. I've, I've done that. But for the sake of time, um, I just want to look at one. And I think we'll get the understanding of the rest. It's the, the last one at the end of verse 4. So if your Bibles are open, you can, you can see it. He puts it this way, lovers, and the reason I want to look at this one is because four times in these 19 descriptions, he uses the word lovers. He starts with that, lovers of self in verse two, lovers of money, and now at the end of verse four, lovers of pleasure rather than lovers, that's the fourth, fourth one, of God. You see, we are naturally lovers. We love things. And Paul's saying these people, the symptom is that they are lovers of pleasure. And what I think all 19 of these descriptions have to do with is this self-focus. So if you go through all and you'd write a description for each one on how they focus on the self, you'd be able to do that. I've done that. And this one, lovers of pleasure, is they are focusing on, on how they can stimulate their senses to bring about pleasure to themselves rather than stimulating their senses and their affection as lovers of God. One is God-focused, one is self-focused. And the main symptom you're going to find creeping out of these people is a self-focus, a self-love. And Paul says, Timothy, this is dangerous. That's why at the end of verse 5, he uses this command, avoid such people. CDC regulation for a spiritual pandemic. Stay home, save lives. Avoid. Now, what I find interesting is, is this is what Paul's saying. The last days aren't something that's coming. The last days are something that's here. Timothy, you're going to engage these people. And what you need to do is you need to avoid. Now, I want to be very clear on, on what that means. It does not mean that you are to be cold to these people. It doesn't mean that you should be mean to these people. But like, I've seen that before where these, these Christians, at least in name, are mean to people. People who, who they are really becoming self-puffed up over and abusive to. The exact language Paul is using for the 19 descriptions. Right? You're going to go to hell. That's what people do. They, they condemn people. And that's just mean Christianity. And it's really not Christianity. It's just mean. That, that's not what Paul is saying. I think this is the heart of what Paul is saying. And we're going to ground ourselves in this today. He is saying to Timothy, who influences you? Who influences you? Avoid these people. Don't give them your attention so that they become influencers of you. This is why. And I think he gets speaking into Timothy's specific context in verse 6. For or because among them are those who creep. They're kind of creeps if you look at the description, but that's not what he's saying. He's saying those who creep, those who sneak in like a thief to rob. That's what these people are, are, are doing. Creep into households. That's not a reference of stealing items in a house. It's stealing people in a house, particularly the vulnerable people. 
That, that's why he goes on and says this phrase. They creep into households and capture, lead away, lead astray, capture their minds of weak women. Now, I don't want you to hear here that Paul is calling women weak. Like, that's not what he's doing. He, he's not being dismissive, and he's not diminishing the value of women. I think he's speaking into a specific context, naming those who are in Timothy's context who are vulnerable. So it's kind of like COVID-19. Uh, the CDC has named those who are vulnerable. They're, they're people with pre-existing medical conditions or those who are 65 years and older. They're not naming that to diminish you or, or to demean you, right? There's nothing wrong with that. They're just saying this virus of COVID-19 targets you. And Paul is saying, Timothy, in your context, this virus, these people are targeting these women who are weak. And the reason they're weak is this. They are burdened by sins. This particular word for sin means to miss the mark. Right? They don't hit what they're targeting. They, they don't hit God. They, they don't hit their life, hit the, the, the living that God calls us to live. They've missed the mark. And when you miss the mark from something, there could be guilt. There could be shame, this heaping of it. That's these women who are vulnerable and this virus these people are targeting. And it's dangerous for them because we read here, it led them astray. It captured their mind with a variety of passions. This is what I think is going on. So here's these women who are vulnerable because they're burdened with sin. And these people come who are self-focused. What are they going to do to help these women? They're going to say, focus on the self. Right? Be lovers of pleasure. That, that's how you deal with this pain. That's how you get out of the heap of guilt and shame. Just numb yourself. Stimulate your senses with pleasure. It will last temporarily, but then you can go do it again. It's this self-focus that will not help them, only bury them under the heap. These women don't know the one cure, the one vaccine, which is Jesus, because these people are telling them to focus on themselves rather than being a lover of God. And so they're led away by a variety of passions. And the result of that is verse 7. Always learning and never able to arrive at a knowledge of the truth. Now, what I think Paul's also doing here is, is this imagery of women and then this word of knowledge. It, it at least brings me back to Genesis 3. Right, the, the garden where, where this virus of sin began. It didn't begin in China, it began in the garden. When the serpent, the devil, slithered his way, crept into Eve's life particularly, he targeted Eve, not because she was weak, she was created equal, but he targeted her, and he attacked her with this thought of focusing on the self, stimulating her senses for pleasure. He said, why don't you eat of that tree, Eve? And she's like, well, well, it's the tree of knowledge of good and evil. God told us not to or we'd die. And, and the devil's like, I don't know if that's 100% true. He just really doesn't want you to eat it. But look at it. Doesn't it look good? Her eyes saw that it looked good. Doesn't it look good to eat? Her mouth, her sense of taste wanted to eat it. He stimulated her senses. And then he focused on the self and said, the reason God doesn't want you to eat it is because he doesn't want you to become as great as he is. Oh, and she was like, I want to be great. It's this focus on the self. And when Adam and Eve ate it, they gained knowledge, right? They had knowledge of good. That was their relationship with God before the virus entered. But now they had knowledge of evil. And they had no means of attaining the knowledge of truth, of the truth of, of this reality of a life free from sin in a relationship with God that only comes from Jesus. They, with their own power, cannot get themselves out of the heap. They can never attain the knowledge of truth. And Paul goes on to give a couple examples of this. And this is something he classically does in the letter of 2 Timothy. He names two people. And whenever you see two names of people joined together, it is a negative example. It's don't be like them. He uses an example from the Old Testament with Moses. Two people who opposed the truth. They don't only don't have the knowledge of the truth. They oppose it. They're against it. They're, they're, they're not Christ-like. They're devil-like. And they're on his side. 
And, and that's the reality of these people. They're corrupted in their mind. That keeps coming up here. And so this, this is where I want to go with you, church. This is a message from the CDC with the spiritual pandemic of sin. Avoid such people. Or if I could put it in the form of a question that I want you and I to be wrestling with is who is influencing you? Will you please take time to think through this? Because we are influenced by people. Last week, we, we said how, how what we say affects people. It influences people. They, the people we talk to, become what we say. That was the words we used. But this is what Paul wants Timothy to now know. You don't only influence, you are influenced. Know that. Evaluate who is influencing you. Think about the people in your life. And even during this time where we're socially distanced, I think we got to think bigger. I think we got to think of how right now um, people may be watching more TV than ever. Uh, Netflix may be our influencer. Hulu, Disney Plus, Amazon Prime. It, it may be uh, Google search engines. It may be Snapchat. It, it may be Instagram. It is our, our social media. Th those are influences to us. And you may be getting on your screen popping up every week um, how your, your usage is, is increasing. And I, I just want you to recognize that stuff influences you. It can outright attack your faith in Jesus. One example of that right now, there's a major concern about the issue of pornography. Right? People are isolated and isolation is a breeding ground for sin. Right? When no one can see you, that's when you're tempted. When you're tired, that's when you're tempted. It's a breeding ground for sin, and pornography isolates you. And right now, the industry is, is like museums offering free tours. They're offering free stuff out there to get you and to capture your mind, to kill you. And you may be like, Brad, I'm not, I'm not in, into that stuff. I want to care for people who are, but that's not my, my thing. Like, I, I'm on pretty innocent stuff. I'm on YouTube. I'm watching some funny stuff. So, would you recognize something with me? This is a statement by, by John Ortberg. He says, um, what you give your attention to is what you become. That maybe helps bring some clarity to how to evaluate this, Right? Or there's another quote by James Smith. He, he says, um, you are what you love. And let's just recognize this. Um, what we love, we give our attention to, right? So, so I love Melanie, my wife. I give my attention to her. Or I love my kids. There's a lot of kids around, but, but I love my five children. I give them my attention. We give our attention to what we love. And so this is what I'm asking. It doesn't, it doesn't need to be those things that, that outright is evil that you recognize, but you're, you're stuck in. Let me give you this quote. It comes from John Mark uh, Comer, I think is how you say his last name, C-O-M-E-R. He's quoting Corey Tim Boom, and this is what Corey Tim Boom said. She said, If the devil can't get you to sin, he'll get you busy. And this is what, what John Mark Comer goes on to say Her logic is sound. I agree with this. Both sin and busyness have the exact same effect. They cut you off from your connection to God, your connection to people, and your connection from your very own soul. That's what busyness can do. So these people and these influences on your screen, they may not be this outright evil, but but are they making you busy? Are they numbing you? Are they, they feeding your senses of pleasure, of comfort, a focus on yourself? That's what you got to ask. Let me give you another quote. This one's from C.S. Lewis in his Screw Tape Letters, which is a, a creative writing of, of demons talking to each other about strategies of capturing the minds of Christians away from Jesus. 
This is one of the conversations. Um, One of the demons says, it is funny how mortals always picture us as putting things into their minds. In reality, our best work is keeping things out of their minds. Who is influencing you? Who are they? They may seem pretty innocent, but is it capturing your attention? And it's really feeding the self and and not stimulating your senses and your affections for Jesus. If it's not, it's dangerous because he is our vaccine. This is something that I'm I'm really learning during this time. I, this COVID-19 thing has been a learning time for me. I have learned so much about myself. It's been good, but man, it's been painful. And I started recognizing just what's capturing my attention. And so one thing I, I did a, a little over a week ago is I took my phone and I just started deleting apps. Like, I'm not saying this to congratulate me, but this is just something I was wrestling with. And I'm guessing you are too. And it wasn't anything outright evil. Like uh, one of the games was, was Hearthstone. It was just a, a card game. It's a fun game. But, but what I started realizing is my attention is captured by this and it's numbing. So I, I want it gone. I want to avoid it. I don't want that to capture my attention. I want Jesus to capture my attention. Because he's my love. And so please take time. Join in that and be captured by Jesus. And so this is the CDC message, avoid. But I don't just want you to avoid. I just want you to turn away from things. I want you to engage something too. That's the Christian life. And so this is where I want to close. I want you to engage the church. You may be like, ah, here comes a ploy from a pastor. This isn't a ploy. Let me explain what I'm trying to say to you. Right now, we are avoiding, and there is creating a void in us for community. I'm guessing each one of you feel that. You can't wait just to get out and be with the people you love again. And if you're going to avoid some people, again, not, not cutting them off because that's not what we're ever called to do. We still need to engage them with the gospel, right? That's, Paul would never cut anyone out. He, he would bring the gospel to him. But you're going to need to fill the void. And the way you can do that is the church. And so I know some of you are, are watching not from the Pella area. Uh, some of you are hail from Mississippi. Woohoo! Right? Um, I know you've been tuning in. Uh, I'm going to encourage you, find a community there to engage in. Like, you can keep tuning in here, worshiping with us, coming to worship. Like, we love that. But, but find a community. And if you are listening and you're in this Pella community and you don't have a church community, I just want to throw at you, come to Connect Church. Because you need a community. I need a community that will help me capture my attention on Jesus. And I think here at Connect Church, we do that well. Now, I do want to be very, very clear. We are not a perfect group of people. Like, you're going to step in here, and I'm not, I don't want you stepping in thinking, man, you are a perfect, we don't think that. That's not the church. I think that's one of the lies that, that the, the devil puts in your mind in order to think, well, then they're just hypocrites. I want nothing to do with them. That's a lie. No, we're not. We, we recognize that, that we are not perfect. But we know that there is only one vaccine. It is Jesus Christ. We're all carriers of the virus, but we need Jesus to get us out of that heap of sin and shame and guilt, and only he can. And so what we are is we are a community that is all about connecting people to Jesus so disciples are made, matured, and multiplied. We we want people growing in the likeness of Jesus because what captures your attention and what you love is what you become. And we care about what you're becoming. And we're not open right now. We're, we're, we're looking right now at a goal of May 31. That may shift, but we're looking at that, uh, an opening of, of coming together. It's going to be awkward because there's going to be all social distancing. And, and if you fall into that vulnerable category, please, we, we just want you to stay tuning in this way. We'll still provide it. But engage in a community. 
We love you to engage here. Because what we want is for you to join us in having our attention captured by Jesus. And so find a home. That's what I want. And then stay home. Like, recognize how you're being influenced. And be influenced by those who are focusing their attention on Jesus. And then save lives. Be an influencer with the gospel of Jesus. That's my prayer. Let's pray. Gracious God and Father, I want to thank you for each person who is, has come to worship today. I ask, Lord, that we will be given eyes by your Holy Spirit to see what is truly influencing us, whether it's outright evil or just that, that devil's ploy of capturing our mind with busyness. And give us, Lord, that spirit who is not a spirit of timidity, but a spirit of love, of power, and self-discipline. Allow us to discipline ourselves in a way that we recognize what cannot influence us. Help us avoid. And yet help us to be influencers for your glory, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. We're going to transition and, and we're going to go into singing a song. And so I invite you to do that with us. And then we'll close out with a, a written prayer that I ask you to pray at home. And, and then we'll move into our next step question. And it's going to be all about who is influencing you. And please take time to process that and actually take action with that. And so blessings to each of you. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God our Father and may the power of the Holy Spirit be with each and every single one of you. Amen. Love you guys. See you next time. His wounds have paid my rent.